Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Mindset Matters with Sandra video. Um, I am your hostess, Sandra. Of course, I'm a level four U Taptics Fast EFT practitioner. Um, I am also Chief Operating Officer here at Skills to Change, and we have uh, the great creator uh, of U Taptics and Fast EFT, Robert Jean Smith, here with us. And I want to speak a little bit about um, how Robert came up uh, with what is called the Happy Journal. And um, for some of you that are students, of course, some of you are my clients as well. This video is more geared to you. But those of you who are not actual uh, students of the system, but are clients, this will serve you very well. Um, so here we go. So Robert, tell us a little bit about um, how you came up with the uh, the Happy Journal and why it's important. Well, um, <clears throat> it started many years ago because, you know, I'm working with clients and of course the Happy Journal was a creation based on working with, with many people and some of them started out with the, uh, they come in depressed, right? So their depression and so I started just asking questions like, what is depression? How does it work? And so by asking questions, I'd ask them something like, you know, how do you know you're depressed? And they go, well, I feel it. And I said, do you have any reasons or proofs that sh you should be depressed? And they said, oh yeah, I've got plenty of them. And I said, uh, do you have any happy memories? And they go, oh, I'm sure there's something in here. And so what I discovered by working with a lot of people that um, they're successfully creating what it is that they create. And even though it could be depression, loneliness and abandonment or grief and loss or no money, bad health, and realizing that um, one, it's built from memory references and two, it's what they practice on a daily basis. And so uh, I started creating um, the called the happy journal. And so at first I didn't have the happy journal. I just gave them a homework assignment is I want you to just write down some recall, write down some positive emotional experiences. And of course, you know, they'd come back and they didn't do their homework. So then I started trying to figure out why won't people do the happy journal? And now, of course, the happy journal has about has five parts to it and, and, and writing down, noticing and uh, reaffirming or repracticing the happy memories will actually change your life. Matter of fact, my life the way it is today is because I do what's in the book. And so it created a life for me. And of course, you know, the first part is write down happy, positive emotional experiences. And so I did a lot of what you call weight loss programs. And, and a lot of this, the happy journal was developed, not only from working with clients, but also helping people to redesign their, their, their future. Cause here it is, we will go in and we will work on bad memories. And, and that's what Kathy said, you know, every time we come, we're always working on bad memories. And, and, you know, of course that was in the early days before some of the other stuff I know now. And so I said, well, we need to balance this out. And so what I would do is we'd work on bad memories. We would update the bad memories and have them go home and practice the positive. And of course, you know, a lot of people have had what you'd call bad experiences with the law of attraction. You know, it didn't work for them. They tried it and they, and so this is the law of attraction on steroids because it actually will work. And there's some elements that are a part of this that makes it work. And that is inoculating the resistance. But the happy journal is the, um, the redesigning of your life. So I created this based on working with people and finding out what actually works. Because sometimes I'd work on a client and we'd work on whatever bad memories, they would go home and they would, someone would try to go back and find the bad memories. And I thought, well, that's not very smart. And so I, I said, well, why don't we just start practicing, noticing anything that was positive in your day? So write it down in your journal. And then I'd have them go and take their journals with them to the dentist or to work or to wherever they go. And when they meditate with their coffee, whatever it is, and just rehearse and rehearse. And again, what you hold in mind, you get. It's not what you're trying to put in. You know, if you try to put in the battery in your head, it's not in your head. But what I figured out is that you go inside the mind and you change what's in there. And we use our affirmations, uh, lots of pieces. We got uh, recalling happy memories, positive emotional experiences. 
And then we have affirmations, affirming, and I, I teach a good way. And that's what you're going to get in the training is show you how to really make affirmations work. And it's not trying to shove something in. It's actually grooming it from when rewriting what's in there and the five basic ways that we affirm and we affirm all day long all the time and don't even know we're affirming it in five different ways that we affirm memory. So, and then another part is, is gratitude list, the gratitude I'm so grateful for, I'm so thankful for. And the problem is that we have an amazing life today and most people don't even recognize how good their life is and they don't even identify it. Therefore, you know, they're looking at always what's wrong and said, what's everything right? So these are some of the elements of that. And then of course, um, affirmations, gratitude. We also have the gems, goals and dreams. And so for goals and dreams, we just write down some of your goals and dreams. Now, a lot of this stuff that I have in my life, I got, oh, this is one of my very, I think one of my very first happy journals. Um, and it's kind of tattered, but you'll see I have lots of stuff in here and I've got cards. I've got things from my kids and my grandkids. And I got, you know, uh, how to's and those are the gems you put in the back, back part and I got my affirmations and what this does it to be honest with you if it hadn't been for me practicing this model this way of redesigning my mind my life would be totally different than what it is today and so I did my my journaling I did uh, not my journaling I did my happy journal I did all these pieces and you know I still listen to uh, my affirmations. What I did is I took my affirmations and I would, I, I have a program, different things that I would do to get some really good affirmations. I would, uh, I, I spoke them in a microphone and I let them play all night long, even while I sleep. And that's why I think I'm doing what I am today, today is because of that. And so, yeah, it's, uh, I write a lot of stuff, like even good quotes, like in the gym in gyms. And I have one here. So you have great potential for success, but first you must know your own mind and live your own life, then you will find and enjoy that mighty potential. Become acquainted with your inner self, and I say the inner world, the inner self, and you can win what you want within time of your own choosing. Certain special techniques will help you win the goals of your dearest dreams, and every one of these techniques is easily within your own power, Napoleon Hill. So a lot of these things I've started using and applying it in my life, and when I started giving this to my students and then and our, my clients, it helps solidify and to build a new world. Because most people don't realize memories of all types, good or bad, are affirmations. And again, showing people how, how to do that. So what we got to do, we got a, you know, uh, a six-week course where I'm going to go through the happy journal. The first, first day is one of the things we got to we will do some tapping and then first part will inoculate some of the reasons why we don't want to do that. And people do have a big resistance to investing in, inside of themselves and on themselves. So it's going to be a very, very rich um, experience and it's going to be definitely fun. It's, it will it'll be accountability and we'll be doing different things and practices and exercises. But yeah, you know, that's how I created it. Yeah, that's really great. And I'm was one of those people. I was I have some clients as well, and I and this might be natural to a lot of who are listening as well. Is I was so accustomed to writing journal. You know, I've been writing ever since I was a kid. But what we would write in the so-called diary, um, which is really a journal, is all the the sort of get it out, you know, get all the bad things out. But then you're writing everything and you're trying to use your logical mind. So um, I know now that that doesn't help me unless, as you said, you said something the other day to one of the students that I thought was definitely um, not a novelty, but brilliant. It was like an aha moment because I've done this as well, is if you do have an issue, I mean, you can jot it down and work on it later through the system, but you're not writing down pages of, oh, I feel awful because my dog, my aunt, my grandmother, my whatever, right? Mm -hmm. um, how would you speak to someone? They say, but Robert, I need to write down my, my stuff in a journal, my, all my problems. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, when you do that, it doesn't get rid of it, it actually compounds it. And if you practice something every day, you get better at it. And I wish you could write it down and it disappears and burn it or, or uh, tie it to a balloon and it goes away. It doesn't work that way because neurologically, Memories are written on the cortices of your mind, spread out all across the different types. 
And these are actually factual things written on the physical parts of your mind. But when you update those and you reaffirm and practice what you would rather have, and, and, and by the way, this is not this will help get rid of the resistance too, because there is a resistance to having something better in your life. And, and, and that's why we don't move forward or we don't feel deserved that we deserve something better or we don't. Um, I mean, there's so many different pieces, you know, like if you had a journal and, and your brother found it, that keep you from finding it and you get made fun of. So why would I do the happy journal it has a negative emotional impact because of you had bad experiences and we use our bad experiences to prevent us from having something even better by doing something better. So it's, it's very, very common, you know. And, and what is your, let's speak a little bit about that. What, what would be your, in your expertise and years of working with you, because it's been over 25 years that you've been working. What is that resistance? How would you, for lay people, especially like, what is the research on, like, why do we have a tendency to resist wanting the good stuff in our life? And the reason why people resist it is because there's a lot of emotional training in the family. There's some, some religions or it's a, uh, some religions uh, thinks it's very selfish of you. Um, you've you've wanted something and it was taken from you, and the pain of that of having it removed. So why even try? Uh, you may hurt your mother's feeling or your father's feelings or somebody else's feelings if you have you know want something different or outperform your brother or sister. One woman she she would never let her do her best because if she did her sister would get hurt and her brother would get as hurt as a child and her mother would say stop trying to be so smart you're hurting your brother's feelings and stop looking so pretty it hurts your sister's feelings so she always put herself down now these are emotional conditions and conditionings that kept us in a bad place and it's it's a bad it's just a, it's just a program right Right. And could you share um, a little bit about when you started to see the difference in your life using the happy journal? Because you said mm -hmm. um, that you started to, to notice. And I like when you said it was sort of this habit. I, too, have noticed mm -hmm. um, just last week, I thought I had not really accomplished a lot. And I was going down the slippery slope. Mm -hmm. And then I remembered one time I was talking to Nicola, by the way, Nicola Vitovich is, is our L5 um, teacher and a friend of, of mine or ours. But anyway, and so it was really interesting because I remember her telling me, well, just write down something that you every day. And so I started to write down, I realized, oh my goodness, I really achieved a lot. Right. So you tell us if you can a little bit when you started to notice in your own personal life, well, I mean, when I, when I started this stuff, I mean, I was, I mean, I didn't really, I mean, we're, I was raised up, basically, you're to be seen and not heard, you're hoodlums, um, very shy, very withdrawn, um, public speaking was never on the radar, not even in school, nothing, and, and so when I started this, I had, I had a gigantic hill to climb, so to speak, but what I did is I just kept persistently working and tapping and addressing and pushing myself forward. And, and I would watch my videos and I didn't like my sound of my voice. I didn't like this. My use of the English language was not so great. Is, was, were, whatever. And of course, I, I got to the point where um, I just kept tapping on it. And, and, you know, I know that I do the best I can with what I know how to do. And I don't judge that. And I don't criticize that. I, I'm not mean to myself if I have, if something happens. So I think it's, it's learning to be nice, really, learning to be nice from inside yourself, learning to um, appreciate who you are. And, and that truly is not an easy task if you come from a lot of stuff, a lot of trauma, a lot of hurt, a lot of pain, but it's doable. And of course, my life represents my, the changes. I mean, you, you know, if you compare me from where I come from, you wouldn't think I came from there, you know, because of uh, one thing, and that is... I kept investing in me. Mm. I kept investing in me. There's one of the books that got me started in the early, early, early days was Mind Power for the 21st Century. And, um, and, it, and it, it has a lot of, there's some science in there and there's talking about affirmations and all these different things and showing about science and mental practicing, you know? And so that's, that's a big catalyst for helping me to grow. Your Unlimited Power by Anthony Robbins was a great understanding of mental mechanics. And so I just learned that if you invest in yourself up here, memories, references, yeah. you'll reap a better reward. Yeah. So that's, that's how I, I did that, you know.
So you would say definitely, I've heard you over and over again, say, you know, persistence is key. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so it's just a matter of even when you, so are you even saying that in moments or days that you don't feel good or don't have that mood, if somebody, somebody would say, well, I don't feel like doing this, Robert, you would just say, still do so, choose something or, or look at something you're grateful. Like, how would you just, how would you briefly walk through that? If somebody says, oh my gosh, I just can't do it. I can't sit down and, and write something positive down. Well, I mean, there's a resistance to it and there's a reason why. And, you know, we just ask question, why do you think you feel that way? Notice it, feel it, and we tap it. It's that simple. Yeah. That's I mean, really great. And on, on another thing too is just do it. Just do it. Yeah. You know? Very good. Very good. Any uh, last words on uh, the happy journal? Anything you would like to also dispense to perhaps even level one students who are beginning and uh, with your system and are, are, we've noticed that they're, they're really great this, this round as well. Anything that you would suggest? Well, I mean, if I were to say anything about anyone, no matter where you are, whether you're, you're taking my training or just in everyday life is, um, you know, I say, be the steward of your mind. That means you're the janitor keeper. You're the one that keeps your, your mental temple clean. That means you change and adjust bad memories and references. Um, you're stuck with you. You might as well learn how to like you. Uh, you can't run from your problems because your problems are inside you. Uh, and so one of the things is I said, learn to like you from inside you and make peace because what you do inside you, you do to other people. That's why you got hurt because people you loved hurt you. So why don't we just uh, up the ante on ourselves and our life by changing and loving ourselves from within, our, within ourselves? because what you do in here, you do to other people. So I just say, it's a journey. You don't have one day to do it. You have a whole lifetime to continue to grow and heal. And that's how it works. That's fantastic. Very, very good um, sound uh, suggestions and advice and everything. So, um, Everyone, I'm, I'm very glad that you tuned in. And if you have any questions, we're going to give you information uh, below. And also, we are starting in April for six weeks. It's um, the Happy Journal uh, web event on Tuesdays from 6 to 8 uh, p.m. Central Time. And I'll be posting the link as well for anybody that would like to join us. And um, that's really it. If you have any questions, just let us know. In the meantime, thank you very much. Thanks, Robert. And yeah. we'll be talking soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.